Here is your June 2020 update. June is going to provide us with a significant cosmic gateway with two eclipses and the solstice. We need to raise our level of consciousness quickly in order to navigate what is ahead because things are not what they seem. Hi, I'm Saratoga Ocean. Welcome to my channel where I help people to navigate their spiritual awakening so they can embark on a conscious path of ascension. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe so that you can join our growing community of awesome spiritual seekers and lightworkers. Now, as we enter the month of June, we need to begin by assessing where we are right now. Now, if you were to continue to let the media be the chief director of your thoughts, you will most certainly have entered a world of insanity. And I'm referring to social media as well. Here's how it works. The corporate media introduces their latest mind control version of reality into every single platform they can, which includes social media. And guys, it's not just your friends and neighbors who are on social media. It's robots and all kinds of nefarious creatures. And it works because of the anonymity. So whatever reality the media wants us to believe can be stoked and amplified on social media as well as on traditional forms of media. This is why we need to stay centered balanced and firmly conscious within ourselves because they are really trying to drive us crazy right now. Our consciousness is literally being pushed into an existential form of mental illness. Let's talk about the most recent events of lockdowns, masks, and violence. Do you guys remember when I told you in an earlier video that this lockdown, social distancing, and wearing masks was putting us in a dangerous situation because of the way it was tearing apart the fabric of our humanity. I mentioned how it was going to tear apart our human connections to each other and that it would ultimately inflict damage on our energy bodies and our chakra systems. Think about this. We have been brainwashed for almost three months, 24 seven, that humans are vile, dangerous creatures that carry a life threatening disease. We were told that if we do not behave in ways that demonstrate our belief in this, then we are disgusting people who are murderers and deserve to die. If we don't revile and fear our fellow human beings, then we should be shamed, shunned, and ostracized from human society. I mean, we should even be arrested. So that's one aspect of our current human programming. Stay away from humans. They are horrible, life-threatening creatures. The second aspect of our new programming is that because we are so dangerous, then our right to live and make our own decisions is hereby revoked. We need to be justifiably caged in our homes just as though we were dangerous animals. We need to avoid each other at all costs. Even your family and the people you love should be avoided. We need to cover our mouths and noses because our very breath is something to be reviled as disease ridden. Now, are you getting the full picture of that first major package of new programming? A, we're horrible and dangerous. And B, we therefore have no rights anymore. Now, being the good little sheep that we are, who have learned so well to never under any circumstances think for ourselves, we wholeheartedly embrace this new version of collective self-hate. This has been adopted as our new version of humanity. I mean, this is what we now collectively believe. We have a lot of emotion attached to it and we also identify with it. And the masks are now a symbol that prove our social worth. Suppressing our voice, 
our freedom and our right to live and our total separation from other human beings is the new way to demonstrate that you are a good person. Now, why did we realize that this would manifest into something terrible? I mean, how could it not? So next comes the violence and the chaos. I believe that the horrific murder of George Floyd that we all just witnessed has a horrific and ugly backstory to it. I am beginning to suspect that this might have been a ritual killing. This may have been a ritual sacrifice, you guys. I found it very weird that this was done in broad daylight with cameras all around. And then the horror of it was broadcast over and over and over again all over the place for the specific purpose of creating enormous collective trauma. As I said in my last video, I believe that the timing of this tragedy was absolutely precision orchestrated. Now guys, human beings do not have the ability to be this clever because we are far too easily confused and distracted all the time. This came from a much more intelligent source. So if you go back to what I said earlier about the lockdown and all of that stuff, you can see that we were emotionally primed to be absolutely crushed by this tragedy. The ongoing trauma and manipulation that has been perpetrated against us in the last few months has been unrelenting. So we better start waking up a whole lot more or things are likely to get a whole lot worse. Now, June is a month of powerful new energy, starting with a full moon lunar eclipse on June the 5th. And then we have a new moon solar eclipse on June the 20th, which is also the same date as the solstice. So as we move through the middle of June, we are going to enter a powerful energy gateway produced by these eclipse energies. And all of this energy will be even more enhanced because of the additional ascension energy. Now this has the potential to create more chaos depending on where your consciousness is and where the collective is. Or it could empower you to experience a profound shift and transformation into a higher dimension of consciousness and experience. So there are a lot of unknowns in the month of June, but there's one thing that you guys can be sure of. We are on an accelerated path of ascension and we are entering an era that we cannot reliably predict. Every ascension unfolds differently because it depends on so many factors related to how the beings undergoing it choose to evolve. Now I want to bring something else to your attention. Let's go back to what I said about the unfortunate murder possibly being a ritual killing. There's something else that leads me to believe this. It has to do with the aftermath of rage, fear, and anger. In my last video, which you can see here, I explained the extraterrestrial sources behind all of our troubles. I specifically said that I believe the murderer was either possessed or is an extraterrestrial reptilian himself. Now these creatures are the sole reason that there is so much violence on our planet. They literally feed off the energy of violence, fear, and trauma. Now I don't mean to suggest that there's not racism involved in this incident, but it's not in the way that you think. You see, these entities know how to operate at multi-dimensional levels. They operate in far more sophisticated ways than our one-dimensional linear way of looking at things. They can do things right in front of us and we won't even see it. Now here's a great example. They know that we suffer from a collective trauma of racial injustice, but they don't care about that, you guys. However, they do know how to use that trauma against us. Did you all see that black square that we were all supposedly required to post 
on what was called Blackout Tuesday. Did any of you guys have a strange feeling of discomfort with that symbol of that black square? I believe that that black square is actually an occult symbol. It was actually meant to cast something of like um, a collective spell. It actually represents the opposite of what it claims to be. Now, once I woke up to this, I had a very, very weird experience. I instantly felt multiple layers of that image trying to penetrate my third eye. I mean, I literally had to block it. It was very, very intense. Now think about this, you guys. Let's look at Blackout Tuesday. Blackout means black is out. It's very Orwellian. We think it means black is in, but no, guys, it means the opposite. That black square represents a void. It represents an absence. And then they say that racism is the problem with white people, but yet they told all the white people to disappear. They told them to mute themselves and not post anything on social media for at least a week or longer. Do you understand that that represents silence and more than that, it represents abandonment, meaning the white people abandon the entire scene? But again, we were told that it means the opposite. We were told that it means support. So first, we were collectively traumatized by seeing this murder over and over and over again. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but trauma is well known to be used in mind control. And then next, we have this occult black box symbol injected into our third eye. Now, I don't know the deeper purpose for that, but I am betting it has nothing to do with racism. Now, you might say, that's not right. How could they do that? I did not consent to that. Oh, but here's the trick, you guys. Because we do not think for ourselves, many of us wholeheartedly embraced that image and we took it on. And then we dutifully demanded that everyone else take it on too. So that absolutely qualifies for consent. See, we continue to believe whatever the media tells us. No questions asked. So if social media says, hey, this is good for black people, we look at it like a dumb animal and say, oh, sure, it's black, so it must be good. See, you guys, these entities absolutely know how to work with our mental unconscious associations in order to manipulate us. I really think you need to pause at the very least before you just automatically take on whatever is handed to you. I mean, you guys, you don't even know what could be coded in that image. Do you know how easy it is to mentally code something invisible into a black box image? I mean, guys, that is a relatively simple extraterrestrial interdimensional technology. I mean, this is like nothing for these guys. Now, I'm also very mystified by all of these groups of people kneeling and bowing before our wonderful black brothers and sisters. I'm really suspicious of this cult-like activity, and I do not think it has anything to do with our beloved fellow humans who are black. So allow me to propose a certain possibility for you guys. On a conscious level, we now have that black square associated with black people. But what if it's not? What if it's a trick? What if there's a deeper, more powerful, subconsciously implanted association that we cannot see? The reality is that we may just think that we are kneeling, bowing, and apologizing to black people. And maybe on a conscious level, we are but we could also simultaneously be acting on whatever has been implanted inside that black box. I know this sounds crazy, you guys, but I'm telling you, this is extraterrestrial technology. This is no big deal for these creatures. 
we might simultaneously be bowing and apologizing to the reptilian beings who control us due to the subconscious associations encoded in that black box. This could actually mean that we are unconsciously ceding our remaining power to these beings as a supposed act of free will. Because once again, we have been tricked. Don't think that's not possible, you guys. It is entirely possible. This could actually be a ritual that they think will put them back in control again. It's a trick to try and prevent our ascension. You see, they know full well that that ascension energy is way more powerful than they are. So they are trying to find ways to use the universal law of free will against us because they're desperate and they're losing power due to our awakening. They're trying to get us to signal to the universe that we don't want to ascend. They're trying to trick us into doing that without our conscious knowledge. I mean, they are desperate to maintain control of this planet. So I would be very, very wary of that black box and of any other ritualistic or cult-like things that you see happening right now, you guys. Because these entities love rituals as a form of mind control. And none of this is human. I mean, we humans are heart-centered. We are oriented in love. That's our natural state. We don't need black boxes, blackout Tuesday, and muting ourselves to demonstrate sincere and genuine caring and love for our fellow human beings. I mean, this makes no sense at all. The issue of racism is being used against us all in very sinister ways. They know that they can hook us emotionally using this issue. Now, I wanted to lay all of that out for you as we enter into this eclipse energy and into this month of June. Because I'm gonna tell you guys again, we are definitely in a cosmic battle for our souls. I mean, why do you think everything is so insane right now? Now, the energy of this month is going to be intense because it's going to propel us into new and different trajectories. It is really imperative that you take some time away from this chaos so that you can do some deep inner reflection and soul searching because there's something hanging over us that really wants to snuff out our light. And that's kind of obvious if you really look at what's going on. So please do whatever you can to raise your vibration and stop buying into this belief that you should feel guilty if you are happy. Happiness is a very high vibrational state. We need to be there as much as we possibly can and do whatever you can to maintain and intensify your presence and your light because we need to take back command of our souls and our planet. There's a whole lot more coming down the road, you guys. And we have a little window here in the month of June, a very small window, and we have a lot of powerful energy to support us. But how that energy directs the outcome is going to depend on how we position ourselves and where we are in our consciousness. So don't buy into all this negativity. Don't buy into all this stuff. Oh, you're supposed to feel bad and horrible and terrible, and you're never supposed to be happy because that's a bad thing. That's all a trick, you guys. That's just a trick to um, suppress our light, suppress who we are and disempower all of us. So you really need to take whatever time you need by yourself, reorient yourself back into your center, back into your heart, back into love, back into who you really are and what your true mission and purpose is on this earth. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it out with your friends. And be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because I will be here every week, three times a week with new videos because we need to continue this conversation. I'm sending you so much love, light, and positive energy. Stay centered, my friends. Stay optimistic and peaceful. Namaste.